tell about how your dog's mind works. And we're going to talk about how it works through your dog's eyes, not how we see it. And the very first thing I want to let you all know is that when we think about our dogs, I want you to use a great technology. Use your imagination for one second. <laughs> Close your eyes and think of a dog. Don't picture your own dog. Don't make this personal. Just picture a dog. That is an animal. It's not a human. It's an animal. And its brain works as that of an animal, not as a human. Now, we love our dogs. Oh my God, Americans and Europeans love their dogs. Now India is getting in on the picture. We want to humanize our dogs. We bring them into the house and we want to make them part of our family. Okay, let's back up now. First of all, the dog, we all agree, is an animal, correct? Of the animal world, it's a canine. Now what are canines? Canines consist of wolves, coyotes, jackals, foxes, dogs, roughly about 150 other species that are all in Latin and I went to an Episcopal school and can't pronounce one of them. But anyways, these are all canines. Canines are pack animals. What does that mean? They live in groups. Now, I can sit here and do a three-hour lecture on the structure and hierarchy of pack. But for the purpose of everyone here, what's important for us all to understand, there are two positions in a pack. Pack leader and pack followers. In our dog's world, they're used to somebody telling them what to do. This is how their brains are hardwired, okay? The pack leader runs everything. They tell the whole pack when to eat, when to sleep, when to pee, when to poop, how to play, okay? The pack followers do whatever the pack leader wants. Now, that's how their brains work. When we bring them into our home, in our eyes, we're bringing them into our family. But in your dog's brain, you're becoming part of its pack. Because that's all it knows. Now before I go any further, I want to express one thing. I'm not telling anybody here to love your dog less. I'm not telling anyone to be firm and and all this stuff. I'm telling you to love your dogs differently. Give them what their needs are. If anybody reads The Dog's Mind, Dr. Bruce Fogel, Dr. Bruce Fogel states the three needs of the dog. Number one is exercise. They've got to exert the energy that's in them. Number two is guidance and discipline. They have to have rules. They have to have structure. And as he says, affection as a reward for good behavior. All right, now let's look at this again through the dog's eyes. You bring your dog into your home, and in this dog's eyes, you are all its pack. The only concern the dog has is, where do I stand in this pack? What's my position, my rank? The fortunate thing is, unlike its ancestor, the wolf, the dog really doesn't want to be pack leader in the human pack. He wants the human to take the role. However, if we humans don't give our dogs the rules, the guidance, and the leadership that they need, their brains, their DNA says someone's going to be in charge, <laughs> or the pack is in jeopardy. If the pack is in jeopardy, I'm in jeopardy. So if you humans aren't going to do this, in the realm that I can follow and respect, I'm going to step up to the plate and take over. What does that mean for you? Here's what it means. Your dog runs the show. Your dog is demanding. 
Your dog yips and nips, pees and poops all over your house, does whatever they want, jumps all over your guests, are annoying, steals things, and basically does whatever they want. Because they're in charge. Make sense? I see heads going like this. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Kind of basic. Daisy. <laughs> now here's Daisy. another thing. Daisy. We want to humanize them. So what we do is we take their behavior Daisy. Daisy. and we put a human term to it. And guess what? 95% of the time you're dead wrong. Because guess what? They're not human. So what you think they're saying isn't what they're saying. Let me give you an example. Okay, now raise your hands here. How many people have petted another dog and have your dog run over to you and get right in your face? Raise your hand. And what do we constitute that as? Jealousy? Guess what? There's not jealousy in the dog world. All they care about is what's my position in the rank? Have I been demoted? Have I been promoted? Where, where do I stand? That's all they care about. How many people here have their dogs lay on the couch with them and the dog will take their front paws and wrap them over their leg or over their arm and kind of hold them like this? One, two, yeah, three. How many lean up against your leg like this or like right across your feet? And oh, isn't that warm? Isn't it cuddly? Your dog is possessing you. This is mine. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> but we think it's love. Oh, look at this. They love us. Isn't it wonderful? When the dog sits there and goes, Oh, look. He wants attention. Yeah, he's demanding it. Yo, human. Pet me. They're running the show. Now, how do we correct that? Here's the secret, and it really isn't a secret. All you have to do is provide calm, consistent, direct control over your dog, and your dog will sit there and look at you and go, they got it, they're in charge. Because if you go back to the wild animal, the canine, and you look at the most successful packs in, in pack history that we've been tracking, and I'm referring to, um, at this point, wolf packs. I'm talking about the Druid Pack of Yellowstone. I'm talking about Pack 229 of Alberta, Canada. These packs that held primary real estate in their wild kingdom world, we're all controlled by calm, consistent pack leaders. If in the wild a pack leader is abusive and aggressive and abusive, the pack will do a couple of different things. Turn on them, kill them, run them off. But if they're calm, consistent, the pack follows them willingly. That's all we have to be with our dogs. We also have to understand our dogs work off our energy. Okay. Come on, let's face it, guys. How do you know? How do they know you're going on vacation three days before you pull the suitcases out? They know. How was it? You walk in the house, you had a bad day. The dog goes, oh, 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 okay, I'll be over here. <laughs> they know. They sense it. Okay. Your energy has everything to do. If you're frustrated, your dog isn't going to follow you. If you're angry, your dog isn't going to follow you. If you're anxious, if you're uncertain about what you're doing, your dog isn't going to follow you. But calm, consistent, leadership, the dog will buy all day long. And that's how your dog's mind works. Understand, these are the most incredible animals on God's earth. And, and here's one thing, in 45 plus years of me working with dogs, I'll tell you one thing I've gotten from them is that if I don't keep my own balance, I can't get a dog to do anything. Dogs are our barometer for how our balances are. If, if you're home and your dogs are kind of acting off the wall, before you go looking at your dog, look at yourself. Okay? When you're sitting there going, why won't you do it? Think about it.
of that. Look at the dog. The dog's sitting there going, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> because you've lost it. And the dog isn't going to follow me. And, and I can tell by everybody smiling here, you're all sitting there going, oh, yeah, we do that thing. <laughs> And that's basically it, guys. That's how your dog's mind works. It's an animal. Understand that. And when you treat it like the animal it is, it will follow you and look at you with respect because you understand how its brain works. Understand its brain, its tail will follow well in that. We have a few minutes for any questions, if there are any. Anybody got quite your hand up going up before? Did you have a question? All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the show. We have some handouts if you just wait a second. Have a good one. <laughs>